Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sniffcast. That's right, we're gonna sniff everything. <laughs> we're doing we're doing lines of video games, folks, here on Local Chat, the name of the podcast. I hate you so much. Do you guys smell cigarette smoke or like burnt <laughs> toast or something? Oh, this is episode forty-two, which is the answer to the question from Hitchhiker's Guide. Classic. Um, Classic. Also, Babe Ruth's number, because every single time I type 42 to quickly go to the notes in Chrome, I accidentally hit enter, and it Googles the number 42 and then tells me all about it. Um, I was about to ask how you would know anything about Babe Ruth. It's like when my dad makes fun of me when I say anything about a gym. He goes, how would you know what a gym looks like? (laughs) Hey, I've been to a gym now. Uh, Also, the name of that Babe Ruth movie is 42, so... That's that's the only other reason. Oh, For some reason, I thought that was the the is that that's the Aaron the Robinson, Jack, Jackie the, Robinson, the Jackie Robinson one. Oh, maybe it's Jackie Robinson. Maybe I I'm think it's, I I think hey, it's Google? now that now that we're sitting here talking about it. Then. I think it's Jackie Robinson. <laughs> oh, there we go. I literally saw forty two, a baseball player, and I went, Babe Ruth. <laughs> I'm look I'm looking up what Babe Ruth number is, and it says Will's a fucking idiot it's three <laughs> it literally the other day someone asked Dale me to, or i was watching something and they're like name a current celtic player and i was like oh larry bird and uh i was very Apparently, wrong i i know larry bird i don't think i could name any celtic player ever i couldn't i don't think i could name oh it wasn't celtic it was sorry it was basketball player oh, and I, I, area, I said uh sure. no oh, it was basketball any, player i just happened to say larry bird you can't name any current basketball player isn't that Embiid guy won't take the shot? Joel Embiid? Every? Kyle Irving? I know it vaguely from my uh, sports betting Steph days. Curry. <laughs> working for a sports betting advice company. LeBron James. LeBron. I, did, I did go to an NBA game. But he fun. doesn't currently play, right? Does he? I think he does. No, Shaquille O'Neal LA? doesn't currently play. No, he's in just a million different commercials. Yeah, I see like hot baby. years. 25 Anyways, years? Is he 80? Hey, real Anyways, quick, joining just to wrap us. this up. Uh, that Michael Jordan uh, documentary series, it's actually very, very good. Even if you don't care about basketball. Very Space good. Space Jam? I highly recommend it. Yeah, um, there's, two, there's two episodes. Space Jam 1 and 2. He's the one that played baseball as well, correct? Yes. That's yeah. how Space Jam you know, starts. Good for him. They're like, Michael Jordan's playing baseball and he sucks. <laughs> Folks, this is a fantastic episode, and if you want to tune out, go right ahead, because you oh, we've got another hour of this. we got so another sorry. hour of this coming up. Uh, joining me this week, it's the Subpixel crew. Uh, we've got Ian and Jake. Nice. Jake, you've recently moved, and you have good internet. You have a good camera. You don't have a VPN on. Your dog isn't barking. You're not, no. uh, you're oh, not I'm in the central fire. time zone. You're in the central time zone. So it's, oh, that's, it's what's, that's what's gone wrong. That's mm-hmm. what's wrong. Oh yeah, that's an, I can't remember. I, I forgot to ask him, but uh, Zach from Save Data, he moved somewhere, and I think I, either he is on the border of Eastern, like you were before, or he's in Central now. And I keep meaning to ask him. <clears throat> yeah, because my favorite like... thing, my favorite thing about the Central Time Zone is that, like, for TV broadcast, etc. Right, Pacific gets their own time. Mm-hmm. Eastern gets their own time, and Central, they're just like, who cares about you? You're just gonna watch it, it at the same time. You're gonna watch it at well, the same time, but it's an hour earlier. It's a little weird. You don't get your own time slot because it's know? Central, and then there's also Mountain Time, and God, then Pacific. Mountain Ooh. Time is the My Korean War time. of time zones. <laughs> what you know? does that even mean? <laughs> it's the Forgotten Time Zone. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse um, me, I need to tweet that real quick. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. We gotta wait for Ian to tweet this, folks. There's lots to talk about this week. Um, I, I'm gonna go first in the the little video game portion here, only to say mm. I have played zero video games this week. Mm. Um, mostly because I've been friggin' busy at work, and also, uh, my uh, Karen's brother got married over the weekend, so it's been a lot of family stuff. It's been a lot of like going out we're like returning things going and buying things blah 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 blah. uh and then also when i finish work i go sit on the couch and i'm just like i want to watch something instead of like playing something so uh i i'm still slightly going through bloodstained i touched like maybe half an hour of it this week um if if, 
at all. Didn't play RimWorld at all. Very so, surprising, and yet you still brought it up. Still brought it up. Will, what I did play a lot will. of is um, I'm almost done 3D printing my Blade Runner wow. PKD. Almost done. I got these grips in from uh, Etsy because I didn't feel like printing them. So this is a dry fit. Um, I I had to tap all the screw holes and everything. Uh, and then I am going to uh, take it all apart, prime everything, paint everything, and then I have to put all the electronics and stuff in the clip and everything. Did you buy? Did you buy a tap and die set? I did. It was so much fun. It's amazing, isn't it? It's inc it's like oh my god! I can add threads or fix threads. Yeah. To anything now. I was it's also incredible. I was slightly pissed because I bought just a cheap one off Amazon, and then like. Two days after it came, I was watching a, a, a tested video, and Adam Savage was like, oh, this is a really great tapping wrench, and it's only 20 bucks on Amazon, and this company's amazing. And I looked it up, and it, I mean, it's all true. And I was like, oh, I wish I had that one. Uh, I need, yeah, I need to buy that one. Because I, I just got, like, it was like a $50 set from Harbor Freight, but it has, like, 40 <laughs> different sizes, which is perfect for, I have an old car. It's 31 years old. There are plenty of times bolts break or just get misthreaded and I have to rethread a hole. So I was going more for quantity than quality. Smart. And the handles with it are crap. Uh, for those of you not following along, basically with tap and die, you can't put it in a drill or anything. That's a guaranteed way to mess it up. You have to hand yeah. tap it. And so the wrench is very important. So I have a crappy wrench. I definitely yeah. need that. So it's it's fun. The other thing, uh, all these screws, I was like individually buying them off Home Depot, like putting them in my cart. And oh, then I was like, no, you... I went to Amazon <laughs> and I just Googled it. And I was like, oh, I will buy 5,000 of these screws for $3. Yes. Uh, I, and I, I did the same the thing with LEDs. Of, um, yeah, I've gotten in the habit of if I need a screw and it's like a dollar, I just pay like the ten, twelve dollars for the like twenty different sizes of it in a little plastic box. So now I have all these little like like I needed O rings, and now mm. I have this little box of like twenty different size O rings, and it's just like it's slightly more expensive, but now it makes me feel like I can do any project in the oh, world because yeah. I have all the screws and everything for it. Yeah. So I um I ordered a shirt and tie, Deckard shirt and tie off Etsy as well, and then I ordered a crappy same color trench oh, coat no. off of amazon wait for, uh, are you gonna wear this outside it's gonna be for halloween there's a halloween party at sip so uh are you well are you gonna get shot by the police for carrying a gun probably uh if i don't <laughs> shoot I really, them first. i really would i really would keep it completely <laughs> under wraps until you're inside because that oh, is 100%. absolutely a possibility <laughs> yeah i'm aware i'm gonna bring it in a backpack and then put it on ask them yeah. what they think about tortoises what yeah. do you think about tortoises? My mother? I, honestly, I wouldn't even go so far as to do, like, like fluorescent orange or yellow tape and just tape around the barrel end if you're going to yeah, have I, I won't, visible I, on your costume. I, the only, I will be out in public, like, when I'm in an Uber. Like, mm -hmm. The party's not public, so I'll be perfectly. Yeah. Um. That's anyways, that's what, what I've been doing. What time's the party? When um, should I be there? Yeah, it's at um, uh, it's 6 a.m. Tomorrow? Uh, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> yes, mm. I'll be there. It's only a fifteen-hour drive. I can make it. I know. No, Karen I looked up the drive, Shit. and she was like, "Oh, we could just drive there." I was like, oh. "It's it's too much for one day." Yeah, I yeah. mean, I've driven thir It's from here. It's thirteen hours, I think. But here's the problem. And I've just done to keep that going down day. this hole. Going down, <laughs> going from New York, Maryland down to Florida. It's it's basically a straight shot. You know, DC traffic is a little iffy, but you can. You can undo that. But going back, like no matter, basically DC traffic is like 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. So if you leave any time between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. from Florida, you will hit that traffic, guaranteed. And so it's one of those things where it's like you you will have to add an hour and a half of DC traffic if you're going yeah. north. And that's what sucks. That's the problem. <sighs> it's that or Atlanta. If you're going any further west, you'll always hit traffic in Atlanta. Yeah, so it's like the time's not bad if you're going south, but if you're going north... Does anyone like Atlanta? I don't. I have lots of friends in Atlanta. <laughs> I, I, don't don't think at Pinewood. I don't think I've ever I noticed been... you didn't answer the question, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I haven't been playing anything. Um, Ian, I'm going to have you go next, because then we can hit up Jake, because I have a lot of questions for Jake. So I figure mm, let's get great. your shitty thing out of the way, and then we can just go talk to Jake. Fair enough. 
I, I, you know, similar to you, it's I'm kind of the opposite where I've had plenty of time for video games, but I don't know what to play. So I've just been playing a whole bunch of different stuff. Like I was playing Grid earlier. I was playing some F1 2020. Uh, I was playing some Project Cars 2. I was playing some Art of Rally. I was playing some Hunter Call of the Wild. Uh, I was also playing some Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge. And honestly, that's the only one worth talking about. Just because, do you guys remember this game? Xbox Arcade Flying uh, Crimson Skies? Yes. Thank you for the nods. Oh, yep, there we go. Now we got verbal. <laughs> um, I've always wanted to play this game. And I even remember when it came out, I bought like the novelization of it. I didn't buy it. I think I got it from the <laughs> library and read it because I didn't have an Xbox. I couldn't play the game. So I was like, ah, I love flying, you know, so I want to at least read it. And I had it in my library for the last couple of years as part of backwards compatibility. And I finally got around to playing it at like 11 p.m. the other night. And um, it's pretty good. I'm probably not going to play more than an hour of it. But there's one thing that's crazy about this game. Have either of you guys played this game? A long, a long time, time ago. ago on someone else's Xbox. Gotcha. Yeah. What blew my mind was, OK, number one, the opening sex scene <laughs> is, is, yeah, it's a sex scene. It's crazy. I mean, not really, but it's basically like the protagonist, like waking up next to a half naked woman being like, I had a great time last <laughs> night. And it's just like, excuse me, what? Playing cards. Um, and the other thing is, this is ki it's kind of an open world game, which is really weird. Like you have your Zeppelin, which is your base, but then they like, I don't know if there's multiple areas, but at least the, the, the first area, they're like, Hey, here's your repair shop. Here's your your upgrade place. And then there's blue icons, which are people flying around. If you go fly up next to them and hit the button, they'll put you in a mission, which is also in the area. So it's almost like a Grand Theft Auto-esque where you have a space and there's missions within the space, but you're never really like doing like a hard transition where there's like a list of missions and you launch a mission. And there's side missions and main missions. And it just kind of blew my mind that this game, this old, I really thought, I don't I don't think it was panned at the time, but it, I don't think there was a lot of hype around it. And so I thought it was mm. just kind of a in my head. I'm like, OK, it's just going to be a generic, you know, kind of Rogue Squadron copy. Like there's 10 missions. You got a couple options of playing. So what? But like there's actually like a decent amount of like depth to it, which is weird. You guys ever have that where you like pick up an old game and it's just surprisingly modern in a way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how uh, I felt about Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 when I dove back into it. Yeah, and it's 3D. Yeah, and it's and it's a really good 3D. Yeah, I um, I yeah, I didn't play a ton of Crimson Skies. The one thing I do remember about it is it, I I can't I don't know if he actually did it, but the cover is the most Drew Struzan cover, uh, movie poster yeah. in the entire world. I I bet he probably did it. It's like so close. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but you did remind me there is another Xbox exclusive game called Blood Wake. I don't know if it's by the same developer or anything, but it's literally boats and you like put things on your boats and like sh mm -hmm. it's pretty much Crimson Skies, but boats. And that was the Xbox game I played a butt ton of as a kid. Uh, and I always remember seeing Crimson Skies and being like, oh, it's like Blood Wake, but in the air uh, and being gotcha, excited yeah. for it. It was just crazy because playing it, I was like, th this is one of those Xbox properties that they should bring back. And I think I'm entirely biased because I bought into the hype and it's right in my wheelhouse of like flying 1920s, 30s type type thing. Um, they should totally bring it back. And the crazy thing is they don't have to do much to modernize it. I think it's literally just graphics and then smooth out a lot of the gameplay. But it's an open world. There's plenty of mission types. There's customization. It's just like add more of that. It's not like they have to completely modernize or rework the game. And that was just bonkers to me playing... I don't think it was an Xbox launch title, but it was very early Xbox. And that is, it's just an insane thing. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, I didn't put it down here because I didn't want to jinx it. But folks, I think it's finally happened. I, it, could, it could still not happen, but it's looking pretty good. I think today I bought an RTX 3080 graphics card. <gasps> um, no. Yes, and look, uh, the RTX 3080 came out about a year ago, and I have wanted one since then. I've been trying since then to buy one. Um, for a while, I was, like, following all these Twitters and, like, constantly checking it, 
And then for a couple months, I was like, okay, if I happen to come across one or if I happen to see the notification. Um, but I think seeing trying to play Battlefield 2042 and it wasn't really running that well, I was like, okay, I really need to like actually hop on this. So I've been paying attention a little bit more, but literally I've been trying for a year to, to buy an RTX 3080. And um, I got a notification today, hopped into Amazon, added it to my cart, and I purchased it, and they nice. shipped it, and it's been nice. picked up by UPS, so nice. I think I got it. Okay, but here's, look, I got a little bit of a story here. Uh-oh. The, the RTX 3080. The MSRP for the NVIDIA edition is oh, $700. No. I got a third party. It's not third party, but it's like, you know. It's made by Zotac, which is kind of like Gigabyte or EVGA. It's a different company making a 3080. I think the MSRP on this card was originally like $820, $830. Um, that was before the tariffs. That was before all the scalping. That is before the MSRP manipulation by the retailers. Guess how much I paid? Will, how much do you think I paid? Oof. Including taxes and shipping. $1,350. Jake, how much do you think I paid? I don't know. This is not my realm. I'm going to I'm going to assume that Will is close to the money, so I'm going to say maybe 1400. Jake is only $4 off. It was 13.96. Oh my gosh. Which honestly is about what it is right now non-scalper price. That's what retailers are selling it for. That but is insane. here's the caveat, folks. Here's the caveat, folks. I'm looking. Look, I feel like I've cheated somebody here. My out of pocket is not 13.96. Let me tell you how. My company has one of those stupid reward programs, and I just left it alone where you get like points where people are like, kudos, thanks for helping out. Here's 10 points. And it was just a bunch of stupid stuff. Like, you want to spend all your money on like a really crappy blender? Um, I let those points sit for a couple years, and then I found a gift card section. And I got $975 of gift cards for Amazon. What? So I paid about a little more than $400 for this graphics card. That is insane. I, that's the only reason why I bought a graphics card was because I went, I can afford these crazy prices now because my out of pocket is so low. That's bonkers. So, wow. <laughs> So it's it's going to be your Tuesday, folks. Daddy finally got a new graphics card. I can't wait to, to take my GTX 1080, put it in a different machine, and start doing some 4K 60 FPS ray tracing, baby. I can't wait. It's going to be so good. Don't don't play New World and brick your card. <laughs> I, yeah, oh, God, man. I know. That's the other thing is that these cards are still a little iffy. Not just because of the card, but the tech is so weird now that it's like... yeah. I hope I don't have a bad card. Because even if I have a bad card and I try to RMA it, they're going to be like, okay, we'll get you a new card in three months or something like that. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyways. That's awesome. I'm so I, very excited They can still cancel you. it. Uh, it's true. It's I true. Previous, previously, I think back in like February, I ordered a card from Amazon and they canceled the order two days later. But it's shipped. So fingers crossed I have a card. <laughs> something now. is on the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if I don't think I'll say... I know I've said this before. This is going to sound like a joke. I swear to you, it's not a joke. The last year, I've made two major purchases. A graphics card and a house. It was easier to buy the house. That is not a joke. The house was more paperwork, you. but I, I could easily do it. It was just stepping through the process, right? The graphics card has been an absolute nightmare for literally a year, constantly trying to buy it. And that was the hardest part, was just finding it in stock. It's crazy. It's crazy yeah. out there. Um, before we move on, I, I did look it up. Uh, Drew Struzan did draw the Crimson Skies cover. Oh, wow. He actually, he posted the black and white version of it, and it's like a movie poster with a little rectangle on the side for the spine. Pretty neat. Oh, nice. Um, I've thought about buying, he has like art on his website, and some of it's cheap. I thought about buying it, <clears throat> but still expensive. Uh, moving on. Jacobford, sir, you've been uh, playing a, video as, games. Yeah, as a tangent, <laughs> as a brief tangent to to uh, Ian's discussion of finally tracking down a card, I have twice now since the launch of the PS5, because I just didn't want to fight to try to get one right at the very beginning. Twice mm -hmm. now since the launch, I've received an email from PlayStation to be like, hey, your valued customer or whatever, here's your exclusive link to a site where you'll be able to order your PlayStation 5. And both times yeah. it's been when I've had another, like, 
a, a financial decision that oh. has superseded <laughs> the purchase of a yeah. PS5. So I still don't have a PS5, though twice now it has been offered to me. Hey, um, look, I'm just going to fly my fanboy code right here. I haven't turned my PS5 on in like five months. It's not worth it. Just get an Xbox, get Game Pass. It's just so much better. Yeah. Such a better use but of your there's money. there's really exclusives is. that I want. Like what? Let's wait for it. Well, you know, they're the, coming to PC you know, anyway. Yeah, some of it. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna talk about that later. Um, yeah. So the reason I've been able to play maybe more video games than the both of you is because um, we finally got to Illinois this weekend. But Hazel's been living here for like a month because her job wow. started a month ago, and wow. we just weren't able to find a place to live between that time until now. So I was still in Indiana, home by myself, just playing video games after work every day um so i played uh, a lot of islanders which i think i talked about on a previous podcast little city building game on these islands which yeah. i just checked my switch and i'm up to 155 hours <laughs> um, wow it's just calm and relaxing and you can sink that much time into it and not realize um a lot of destiny 2 it's festival of the lost right now so it's the holiday event Ooh. blah 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 uh, I have not played as much of that now that the seasonal story has kind of been put on pause for a bit. I mm -hmm. hopped in, I played some of the Halloween stuff, but I wasn't super jazzed by it. Two new games that I have been playing a fair amount of. One, Hot Wheels Unleashed um, to scratch my racing itch. Uh, and nice. then Outer Wilds, Echoes of the Eye, the DLC for the hit space exploration game outer wilds and w will you said you had questions so before i talk more i will field those from you um i have question question mm. number one is hot wheels About unleashed or... as uh sure. is hot wheels unleashed uh as cool as it looks and fun to play as it looks um it mm. looks great they've nailed the kind of the aesthetic and like the feel and the you know, there, it, it, there's like a texture and like a tactility to all the little cars like whether they're enamel or die cast or plastic or whatever you then like look and be like oh yeah that's on my shelf or whatever mm -hmm. the driving took a little bit of getting used to i don't know if maybe um it's just that i've not played a lot of racing games like that but i had to like reset my brain from like the mario kart drift to the drift that's in uh hot wheels unleashed mm -hmm. um it's got like a i think i put this in one of the slack or not slack one of the discord <laughs> threads that it's got like a not a story mode but like the campaign mode or whatever it's kind of like a node based where you'll do like a bunch of a circuit race or a sprint race or a time mm -hmm. trial or whatever. Um, and then there's boss races, but it's not, you're not racing against a boss. The boss is like an environmental hazard, like oh. based on some, some like, like classic, you know, those like bigger hot wheels sets. Like there's mm -hmm. one where you start like coming out of the mouth of a dinosaur or there's one where like, there's like a spider thing that can jump down and like stop your, stop your car. Or spit spit webs and stop your car, which like I vaguely remembered. I'm like I feel like I remember seeing real versions of those in people's homes, and so those are the boss races. Um, but it's still just like a regular circuit race. It's just got a bonus kind of uh, environmental hazard. hazard to it. Um, and I got through all those fairly quickly. There wasn't like a ton of content there. Um. And then beyond that, there's not really much to do if you're not going to do online multiplayer. Oh, um, gotcha. So I did online multiplayer, and I got first place. And I said, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Nailed I'm it. Done. I'll stop. <laughs> I, I really want to play this game, but this is a Game Pass game to me. I think it's, yeah. isn't it $50? It is which is like American doll hairs. This looks like a lot of fun, but I'm not going to pay 50 for an arcade racer. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I was going like to say it on sale. It yeah. would definitely be fun if we could all play it together on stream or something. I think that would be yeah. really fun. But 
Yeah, I'll definitely pick this. This is the type of game I, I either, if you had a glowing recommendation, uh, I would pick it up. And my backup was if it ever <clears throat> comes to game, sorry, I'm getting emotional. If it ever comes to Game Pass or anything like that, uh, I will definitely, definitely check it out. Um, Download my subpixel liveries. Yeah, I did. I did see a thing that I thought was absolutely adorable, which is the drifting distance is in inches instead of my our feet. Because yeah, of yeah, yeah like it's cars. all your total drift distance is in inches. And I think that um, is very cute. Um, I will say once once you get in the f the flow of how the drifting works, when you nail like a perfectly drifted turn, it's very good. Just kiss. Is is there local yeah. multiplayer? Or no. There's a split screen. Okay. But I don't know about like like local like if we all had if we were all in the same room. I I, I don't know. I no, I meant I meant that. split screen. <clears throat> that there would make I'd be surprised if it didn't cuz I like I feel like kids would be playing this game. Mm -hmm. Um Well, speaking of uh kids, how is Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye? <laughs> uh the DLC does not have any children in it i don't think <laughs> well um, i've been misinformed <laughs> i no spoilers no spoilers I, now, yeah so. no spoilers um but uh, outer wilds just like i don't know like the the base game i remember like one of my, the, my favorite things about it was just kind of the the organicness of unraveling everything that was going on where you'll you know you'll fly somewhere and you'll look at something and you'll be like okay that's neat then you'll you know fly somewhere else and you'll be like oh wait that's talking about this thing on that planet and i remember then that said this and you start putting all the pieces together and figuring out what's going on and this is definitely all of that in spades um i just kept like at, the, at every every loop finding something else and and realizing like oh wait that's this thing that's that thing like you'll 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 come across something your very first time going to this new thing um and then you know like five or six loops later you'll be like oh, i could have like there's like passageways and 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 things you can interact with that you walked past like 10 times not realizing you could interact with them and then you find something that's like hey you can interact with that and you're like oh it's amazing <laughs> um and the 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 new setting is very cool it's not like like there's a lot of variety to all the planets and whatnot in the base game but then this was like like i i i got to it for the first time and it, it was just kind of like oh, what i wasn't expecting this this is really really cool um i would i do have a glowing recommendation of <laughs> echoes of the eye i've not finished it gotcha. okay i feel like i'm close yeah um but you know that's the other thing you you just keep discovering things and you're like I, am i close i don't know but yeah i feel I, like i am i really want to check it out uh we had elisa on a couple weeks ago and she also had a glowing recommendation of it um and from all i know about it is that it's different enough because there was a uh next lander did an interview with the one of the designers and that they only made it because they they knew they could like they had an idea and a story and everything they weren't trying to like force out content just to like be on the mm -hmm. back of the success and then the other thing i know is that it's like somewhat horror e uh, uh the sections it, there is stuff. an atmosphere there are moments of definitely a, a more tense kind of spooky yeah. atmosphere but there are they introduce um yeah it's it's not i'm not I don't feel like I'm repeating anything. I'm learning mm -hmm. a lot of new stuff and there's new mechanics and new, but it's all, again, you discover, you discover them organically and you realize how to do things organically. Awesome. Um, it's just right up my alley. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to check it out. Um, I need to, how much is the DLC? Probably 20, right? That would make sense. I want to say fifteen. I'm 15, also getting 20. confused because I bought the the Void Bastards DLC, which was five dollars, but I don't Ooh. think it's. I think it's more than that. Void Bastards um, is a game. I ten wish or fifteen. I, I need to like. I played it a bunch, 
and then I think something else came out, and then I like hopped off of it. It's one of those games I would like to go back to because it it nailed Outer, Outer Wilds. Probably they came out the same day, Outer Wilds and Void Bastards. Oh, did they really? Yeah, uh, but mm-hmm. I I didn't play Outer Wilds for a while. Game Pass until baby after it came out. Jake, buy that Xbox baby. Get that Game Pass. Going. <laughs> I would like to, but I keep <sighs> stuff keeps happening, like my yeah. U-Haul getting impounded. Yeah, stop <laughs> impounding your U-Haul. Pull your stop drugs. It. Stop being a drug. I don't mule. know where I was supposed to put it. Like I'm like I uh, by the time we got to Illinois, I couldn't have taken it to return it to the U-Haul. Where was I supposed to park it? Can I you... parked it so far away from anything. It had like four empty spaces on either side of it. <laughs> but because it didn't have a parking pass for this apartment complex, they, I'm wow. surprised they they're I'm surprised fast. They impounded it though, because that's not something you could just put on a like a normal tow truck. You got to get a heavy duty tow. I truck. know, and I, I'm like, I was. We were unpacking it until basically midnight. So at some point between midnight and seven a.m., there was some monster tow truck in this parking lot <laughs> taking Jeez. my U-Haul away. Oh, uh, that's, that's wild. I feel like yeah. that's there's like I happen to park uh, near the crosswalk here overnight one night and i the next day i got a ticket like i've left my car there for days and i've never gotten a ticket but the one time i happened to be within 25 feet of a crosswalk next morning had a ticket yeah and they rarely ever ticket here too it was better than it being stolen because it still had half of our stuff in it yeah Um, but it was still you know not exciting to wake up and be like that there's a big empty space how did, how, that how did you know who to call? Because there's signs oh, all okay. around that, that the sense. apartment yeah. complex that are like, hey, we use this towing service. If your car gets towed, call this number. And so I called the number and I'm like, did you tow a 20 foot U-Haul from this apartment last night? <laughs> and they said, oh, yeah, we did. Go pick it up here. Thanks. That's stupid. Um... And then she had the audacity to tell me to have a good day after I got <laughs> off the phone with her. <laughs> What what a horrible, horribly nice person. Uh, speaking of unloading, we're going to unload some news. But before we do that, we got to play the news theme, which means I got to click this button right here. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? I realized during the news theme, I should do like the Jimmy Carr bits in eight out of 10 cats does countdown where I like do something on the screen while it's playing. But uh, I'll do that in the future. That'll go in the lazy docket. Uh, Folks, lots of news this week. I feel like I just kept adding things and they just kept piling up until they exploded all over my face in news. Folks, you know what happened this morning? The Uncharted trailer I came mean, out. I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking at the paper. <laughs> I know what happened. I know every single frame of this trailer because your boy had to make a breakdown of it uh, and oh, compare disgusting. each scene to the video game. And and I did that. <clears throat> it's a three minute video. Let's look. I have thoughts about this, but I want to know what your general positive, negative, meh feelings are on this. I just want to say. I watched the trailer a billion times. I'm okay with it. I think it looks like a fun movie. I'd probably go watch it. I don't know why it has the Uncharted name on it. That is what I will say. Like, it just looks like... If you didn't tell me it was Uncharted, I'd be like, oh, cool, there's a movie with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, and they're doing things, and that's fun. And it Because it kind of had, like, a adventure sort of vibe to it. And then the other side of that is every single person complaining the number one complaint i saw was this movie's a prequel and they have the airplane scene from uncharted 3 in it like that doesn't even make sense and i just like do homages or things like that not me <laughs> do they not exist in your fantasy world uh, i don't I know just, I, uh, what about you this so yeah this this trailer for me falls into a category of uh, very homogenous uh, action adventure slash archaeology like like tenuously archaeological 
films like this tomb raider uh the alicia vikander one and the angelina jolie ones where it's a bunch of stuff that you know never would have gotten greenlit if indiana jones hadn't been so successful whatever you know 40 years ago yeah um but all these movies just look exactly the same okay, and none okay. of them are seem to do anything to like set themselves apart beyond look, you knowing the source material i 100 percent agree with you guys and now i need you to just realize that all of that is 100 percent true about the video games as well like there is <laughs> this is this for me is like a perfect example of like there was there was an old joke there was somebody who made this commentary and people got on him but he basically said like uh video games need to grow up they are stuck in young adult world where where their their storylines and their plot points are stuck in like young adult fiction where it's not quite mature enough and able to handle mature themes properly and that's one of my main problems with uncharted is that it's just like it's too much trying to be an indiana jones movie and it's all around these quick time experience action sequences that you're supposed to just go ooh and oh he's flying out of a plane and when you translate that one for one to a movie and make you watch the trailer you go this looks kind of like lame like it like like everybody's already done this there's nothing unique in this it's like yeah no shit what do you think the video games are man uh, the so only thing like, i'll say is yeah. that i know you 100 percent disagree with me for some reason but those games are pretty good like they they're... i'm not saying they're, they're they're awful yeah but i think the way that they are constructed is bad for the games industry because they're not terribly creative. They're just trying to recreate a movie feel and they take a lot of agency away from the player. When I think what you but, need to focus on with video games is like, is interactivity and spontaneity. But which and, Uncharted and games have you played? Feel. Audience, Ian has made a spotlight video about this that uh, I probably say, released about the, a year ago. Like that entire plane sequence in Uncharted, you play the entire time. None of it is a cutscene. You play, but it's super linear. Yeah, but that's like, matter. look, so you're on a thing, that are here's, linear. here's one handhold. So just push the analog stick forward and boom, you're going through it. Like, like it, I, to answer your question, I played the first hour of one and then I played like five or six hours of four. And my, my point is just that I think the video games are given so much slack because the art form is still so young when all I'm asking people to do is to be a little bit more critical of it. Because when you take that exact same thing and you cookie cutter it into the movie format, when that aesthetic is so much older and we expect more from movies and you go, this doesn't look very good. It looks kind of samey. It looks like it's not got anything unique. And it's like, yeah, that's what the Uncharted games are. They're well done, but there's nothing but unique there and they're antithetical to video games. I, I place that more on people putting not enough effort to make their own thing rather than the games being bad like there's so many indiana jones games that are terrible because they just tried to make an indiana jones video game without improving anything like there's so many movie video games that are bad because they just tried to copy the movie and not but then there's so many movie video games that are good because they did their own thing yes yeah, so I, yeah I, and think, I can see that like the uncharted games are good and this movie would be good if they tried to do their own thing which they're sort of doing by making a prequel and only a trailer is out. So it could be some amazing movie. We don't know. It looks kind of awful. But yeah, I, I think for me, just the thing that really stuck with me was like the criticisms that people had for this movie trailer. Like 90% of them apply to the games. And it was just crazy to hear people say that. And it was like, it's like Indiana Jones rip off. Like it doesn't quite feel unique enough, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just like, what do you think the games are, man? <laughs> what do you think the games are? You know? <laughs> So, I'll say I I have not yeah. played any of the Uncharted's or any of the Tomb Raiders, um, because they have always kind of you know I perceive them from a distance and go I kind of know what that is already, yeah. um. So for me watching them the the movie trailer being like I know what that is already I've seen yeah. these story beats before I've seen this texture that I know what this feels like I know what this smells like. Yeah, I, I, I do think. This is going to be an interesting case study, though, where I'm trying to think of another video game movie that can so easily closely mimic the video game it comes from. Like, like at the extreme end is like Super Mario the, Brothers. Alicia Vikander, like, Tomb Raider, not count. I don't know because I didn't. Dawn. I didn't watch the movie, <laughs> but I think I think that was pretty close. Um, but like a lot of them are like, we're going to do this world, 
we're going to do the story beats, but we're going to do something different. But this looks like they are skewing very close to the game, and I'm curious to see how that lands. Well, I mean, I watched the video Will made, and there were certainly parts where you're like, hmm, yeah, that's just that's just the quick time event. <laughs> yeah, it that's was uncharted. I also had to browse through, I think collectively, 15 hours of of I downloaded the like the all cutscenes things, which were way shorter than I because they only used most of them only used actual cutscenes, and it made me oh, realize not like the in between. Yeah, not how the, yeah the story little, beats that happened in like yeah the walking parts. I was like, I really remember this thing, and then I had to look it up, and it was like technically you play during it, so it's not a cutscene. I was like. Just give it to me. It's like gotcha. I there's a part in the trailer where he inserts a thing and then turns it, and I'm like, this happens in an Uncharted movie because it happens in any archaeological movie. They insert a thing, yes. turn it, and a door opens. And so I was like, finally in Uncharted two, I found it, and I was like, Thank you. Well, uh, Kyle wants you to read the YouTube comments. Kyle wants me to. Sorry, they're over here. He's um, texting me. <laughs> Uh, oh god the difference uh, sorry the difference is the games are good and the characters feel much more real and have a lot of growth in ways that stuff like Indiana Jones is limited by the medium of the film yeah I, I agree because that it's I mean it's just because you have more time it's like video games are like TV shows where you can do those long character arts, yeah. arcs and stuff like that but I, um, I'm going to lean on Tolstoy there's an essay by Tolstoy that I love vodka is good talks about in any aesthetic medium there are aspects to the medium um so for example in film film is comprised of story it's comprised of music it's comprised of cinematography you know in uh in video games you have music you have story you have cinematography you also have interactivity and the most important of those elements is the one that is most unique to that medium so uncharted yeah they have they have great stories in the video game that is not nearly important as interactivity and those games are not great at interactivity. So it's one of those things where it's like, sure, I'm great. You have a, I'm sure you have a fantastic story, but it's why I don't really like visual novels. It's like, there's not enough game here. This is a video game. Where's the game in here? You know? So I, I'm just curious to see how people react to this trailer. And um, I just, Uncharted rubs me the wrong way. I'm going like, to answer Kyle's comment. I, I don't yeah. know what Nathan Drake smells like, Kyle, but I'm sure it's sweaty. Yes, I was going I like to that, read that one. I, like that, I do like that Tom Holland was kind of shit talking this movie like a couple months ago when he was like, I wish I'd done things different on Uncharted. I don't know how it's going to be. And I, I wonder if like, he filmed the whole geez. movie and then like played the games and like looked into it and he was like, ah, I probably should have done this differently. <laughs> Could be. Um... Yeah. Probably uh, shouldn't have let him pick Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Marky Mark. That I still don't get. I, I don't know why you would take... Like, I can understand there's been young Smart Nathan out. Drakes throughout the thing. No, but why you don't make him look like Sully at all? Like, Sully is, like, known for his mustache and cigars. Why you don't do that? Because there's going to be a Wahlberg stupid scene where someone turns to Mark Wahlberg and says, you would look good with a mustache. Or someone hands him a cigar and he goes, man, this is really tasty. There's like, a picture that's of gonna him. happen. Yeah. There was like a picture of him right around the time of his casting announcement with him in a big mustache. Yeah, well... Um, anyways, I'm moving on. My Let's favorite bit of news. news. Let's go to happy news so we can go back to bad news when we talk about Destiny. We're going to happy news. Idiots. Uh, <laughs> happy news. Animal Crossing DLC. Uh, I'm going to treat these as two separate stories. And they announced uh, free Animal Crossing DLC. So updates, lots of cool little things they added, uh, like ladders and dream worlds and uh, the roost and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, I thought it looked really cool. I'm glad they're adding all that stuff. Me and like. Too patching things and making things easier and not being nintendo and making things awful and then they also announced paid dlc uh which is uh most closely to the happy home designer which was a 3ds game uh so you're designing designing vacation homes for uh any of the villagers uh you can do random villagers you can do your villagers you show them the home that you get like points amiibo awarded. villagers amiibo villagers i can finally put all those cards i have to use um i think it looks neat um jake do you, do you have more thoughts on this i know you're the you're the animal crossing guy 
as someone nearing a thousand hours in Animal Crossing oh, New Horizons, <laughs> I'm very excited about this because I think yeah the the basic DLC it's really not adding a ton of like new playable content outside of the roost and I think uh maybe some changes to Harv's Island. I can't remember if that was in this or part of the Happy Home Paradise DLC. Um, but it's adding a ton of quality of life improvements. Like they kept mentioning the quality of life stuff and I was like, oh yes, like you don't you don't have to go into resident services to access the ATM. You don't have to go into your house to to uh get stuff out of storage. That you can do all that. So you don't have to wait in those you know, whatever it is, you know, five or six seconds in a loading screen adds up once you've played for almost a thousand <laughs> yeah, hours. Yeah, how many of those hours are just um, waiting? That's a good question, but that was um, something that e even, you know, like six or seven months ago, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I wish I didn't have to go into this place every time I wanted to do X or Y thing. And so they, they were like, well, now you don't have to. They're adding new ways for you to... Uh, or no, it must be yeah. The, the changes to Harv's Island, they're adding like a like a big like outdoor farmers market that seems like a way to bypass um, the uh, uh, waiting for the vendor every day. Yeah, waiting. You know, when is you know whoever going to show up? They're all, they'll all just be there in that little bazaar, um, mm. presumably for people who like me have played for almost a thousand hours and still don't <laughs> have all the paintings. So now I can just go get the paintings, I guess. Um, but there's new fence types, which I'm about, because I like beautifying yeah. my island. And yeah, the, you can add permanent ladders, and there you can add more bridges and inclines. Um, yeah, I'm super into it. I'm also super into the the paid DLC is also right up my alley, because at this point in the game, all I'm really doing is... It's like a like a big, you know, Sims island where I'm just going around, and, you know, adjusting things here and there and making it look as nice as possible. So the ability to make lots of other things look as nice as possible is thumbs up for Prima. me. Also, I like they added like you know accent walls, half walls, yes. countertops. You can countertops, columns. You can move between furniture that's close together now. So you can like I'm so into it. You don't have to have the dumb space between the couch and the coffee table I know. now. I love it oh, so much. It's gonna be great. The uh, whole time I was watching and just be like, yes, yeah, yes, yes. I know, Thank I, and you. I didn't yes. Even, I, I didn't play that much, but watching that thing, I was like, oh, I'll go check that out. Oh, I'll go check mm -hmm. that out. Like, I'm excited to fire it back up and find all the cockroaches. Oh, and the other thing they added, uh, which I thought was really cool, is you can do island. Um, uh, they're not statements. They're uh, something. But anyways, you can be like, hey, everyone gets up earlier on my island because I have to wake up early w for kids. Yeah. For my kids. Hey, everyone stays up later on my island. Hey, oh, everyone. Schedules. Everyone. Yeah. Uh, my island, everyone cleans up the weeds because I never have time to get weeds. Oh, on my island, they all collect fruit for me. So, like, you can do... So, if you That's cool. can never... Like, there were a lot of people who went to go play and everyone was sleeping every time they played. So, you can adjust mm -hmm. that now and be able to do your stuff when you get home from work or when you get up early. So, I, I thought that was very nice. Like, this, this whole, like, theme of this DLC is accommodation. Like, you're accommodating your players, which is the right way to, like quality of life your game yeah because i think animal crossing's never it's never been a game that you're supposed to min max so it's supposed to be casual it's supposed to be relaxing uh, and so making it such that you can like you don't have to worry about waking up because i have to this vendor only shows up at this time and i have to be there to get this yeah um, totally um so they also announced uh it will be f the paid dlc will also be free if you subscribe to the Nintendo Online Expansion Pass, which will uh, be $50 a month for uh, individual and... No, $50 a year. Sorry, sorry. $50 a year for individual. Like, and that would be crazy. And $80 a year for uh, family plans, up from 20 a year for individual and 35 for family plans. Um, and that adds the N64, the Genesis, and you get the $25 paid Animal Crossing DLC for free. 
I I meant to look this up. I don't know if you if you lose out on the DLC if you end your Switch Online. You own the DLC. Is it like with Xbox Gold and Sony PlayStation Plus? That's a good question. Yeah, because PS Plus games you can't download it if you have not already downloaded them. You can't download yeah. them if you're no longer paying for. Also, is that PS thing Plus. like are they going to swap that DLC out with other DLC when something else comes out? Um, there's a lot of questions that I feel like Nintendo will never answer. Here's my question for you two. Do you like this? Do you hate this? This new Nintendo Plus expansion plan? I think it's a little expensive. It's, I'm, I, yeah, it's a little weird that they would lock, I mean, specifically, I don't know, it seems like give people the option to buy, I guess, some of the N64 games individually or some of the Genesis games yeah. individually. I mean, it's it's like, that's my problem with Creative Cloud. Like, can I just buy Premiere and Photoshop? Can I, because I, I don't want, all this other garbage. Yeah, it's definitely... Not to say that all these um, 64 games are garbage. <laughs> no, they are. Uh, it's definitely cheaper than, for at least a while, than buying all those games individually as they were priced on Virtual Console. But also, if I could, some of those games I would just outright buy if I could. Yeah. Um, I... I look. I I don't know why people... There were some people who were, like, horribly upset by this. Yeah, I don't think and it's I worth don't think, that. That's so mm. stupid. It's $50 a year. You know how much Game Pass is? It's $10 a month. Yeah, sure, Game Pass has more games, but this this is, like, you are not going to play N64 it's games. It's not that much otherwise. more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's great they're throwing in basically a $25 DLC for free to one of their most popular games. I think, look, it's, it's not Virtual Console. I don't think we're getting that. I don't think it makes sense for Nintendo to do Virtual Console when everybody's moving towards software-as-a-service subscription models. And... Ten dollar, fifty dollars a year, which is less than ten bucks a month, and you get access to all of that. When the original Nintendo Switch Online was underpriced, quite frankly, anyways, because I think it was just twenty bucks a year. This is, yeah, this is good value. It's not an amazing value, but it's not a bad value. I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay with. And plus, it. Uh, is it. this the final nail in the coffin for the Dreamcast and Sega? If they're just starting to put Genesis games on the Switch, are they going to put Dreamcast games on the Switch? They better. Down the road. They should. They should. Play some Sonic. God, I hate Um, I <laughs> think... <laughs> I hate Sonic. Those games are awful. I, they're not I'm, good games. They're so well, actually, bad. The 3D games, I haven't played that much. The 2D games, god awful. Which, they're not I, good. I know we're right, but I've... People I know who have who have grown up with Sega say that about Mario games and that Mario games are just bad and that there Sonic games are good. And there, I like need, there needs to be a hotline that you can call. So these, these mentally handicapped people can just be picked up. And, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, how do you I've think I've got another that? Sonic fan. <laughs> like, how do you think Mario? Third in Maine. How do you think Sonic is better than Mario? It, like, you just I, can't. Just Genesis and SNES games compared. Genesis and NES games compared. Like, how do you think? Look, I will say this. I will say this. As a character, I could entertain Sonic better than Mario, but not in terms of games. Oh, yeah. You got to go fast. Um, you gotta go fast. I'd have him roll all over me. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Uh, just people. Uh, I do like the, the Dreamcast idea, though. Um. This next story, two stories actually go together. Uh, the One Two Punch, Elden Ring announced they're doing a closed beta tech test. Uh, hey, I'm going to interrupt this story. I don't think these stories matter. I do want to ask have either of you seen the Elden Ring leaked gameplay? And what do you think? Is there, is there any way to confirm that it is what it says it is? Because modding I, I, these days is pretty wild yes i believe it is i believe there were some insiders saying yes this is elden ring okay um i, I, mean, I also whatever. saw someone i'm pretty sure they were joking but you never know is that elden ring was delayed so they could find a new qa company <laughs> that wouldn't <laughs> leak the the uh Jeez. the thing um anyways uh elden ring closed beta I mean, it, tech it test you can sign like up a from for. soft game I'm very excited. It looked apparently, open world. It looked very open world. Apparently, it had the compass that was supposed to be in 
Bloodborne, I think people said. I think it was I like found that, in the yeah. code for it, or it might have been DS3. Um, that goes hand in hand with the leak that Ian mentioned. And also, uh, Elden Ring has been delayed a month to February 25th, 2022. I really don't care. I It was in 2022. Anyway. So, listen, it's make that be, game as good February as February is going to be packed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, big, big news this week. God of War 2018 coming to the PC despite PlayStation fans' best efforts to hide video games from other people. Ian doesn't care because he hates good video games. But uh, I think I have a very good point here, which is that this is the old port model, which is, hey, we're going to release a game on an exclusive console, and then a couple years later we'll put it out on PC or a different console and charge full price for it, basically. Although I think it's only 50 um, and expect people to pay for it. And that just doesn't cut it anymore. Man, it's all about Game Pass nowadays, right? It's all about, it's part of a subscription, <sighs> and it's all about multi-platform. That's what it's about. That is just the better model, say, period. Uh, but we swear I swear we're not sponsored by I, Game Pass. I think, they're, I think just Sony's so just slowly adding a back catalog, and they're going to start adding PC games. Um, probably not well, day and date, but close to day and date. How long was it after Horizon came out that it went to PC? It was a couple years. Three years? Yeah. So this is about that, because I think Death Stranding was kind of the unique Death Stranding was a year, the, but it, it was, was not a Sony game. That's true. Yes, but... and, and before Death Stranding came out on PlayStation 4, there were some initial screenshots and stuff that said Steam on it. And when they announced, I remember when they announced it, upset. Kojima said PC and PlayStation. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I just think, I, I, I agree with your point. I think it's an old model that should go away. But I think... Sony is hopefully slowly adding back catalogs. They're also probably not announcing it until it's ready to be ported or they know it can be ported. And then going forward, I wouldn't be surprised if um, PS5 games, probably not day and date, but within a couple I, months, just come to PC. I No. See, I would disagree because Sony is so committed to that exclusivity model. That's why this is kind of a story is because this is them stepping outside of the exclusivity model, but I don't see them putting their foot to the gas and going anywhere near. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ragnarok is going to be an exclusive for. A, yeah, a for time. years. I, I think this is I think this is them saying, yeah, sure, we'll bring it to PC after we've milked the console dry. Um, and I, I don't think they're going to change that. So this is. It, it's just this is. What are you doing, Sony? You need to start competing with Microsoft because literally the only leg you have to stand on right now is that you have some good exclusive IPs on your console. But you are not competing on a service. You're not competing on quantity. You're not competing on like ease of access. Even just like playing old gen games on the on the next gen consoles is just very, very difficult on the PS5 versus the Xbox where it's just like, yeah, we don't care what console you're playing on. Boom, boot it up. Cloud saves everything. You're good to go. They are just so far behind that, I mean, I guess it's good for them to take this step, but it's it's not enough. It's too little, too late. They got to step their game. play it on the Vio. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, Game Pass, folks, if you want to sign up for Game Pass, use code SUBPIXEL. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> Me too. That'd be I great. Wish. Sponsor we need sponsor. that Microsoft money. Um, yeah. Uh, we got, I also... Did you see we got a, a deposit from we Google? We did. For I did. For money. Thank you, we Google. Did. So play on Stadia, God of War. I hope it comes to Stadia. It's my favorite platform. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I left this next story in, but I'm going to skip it. Um, the Did you guys play Disintegration? The amazing four oh, player no. game? Is that this? Is that this guy's game? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well then this is now a non-story. This is this is guy who once helped make a great game has now made a bad game and is now probably going to make another bad game. Was it that it was bad or did it just not find its audience? Because I remember just nobody played it. I, I, I think yeah, it was decent. Was, I remember everything I saw so, look, from it. I was just like, I don't know what the target demographic for this is. And I think a lot of people were like me, where they thought you could pl you can only play as the person on the bike, like outside mm -hmm. the house and stuff. I think a lot of people thought you could play the other characters as well. Yeah. And I it was think like a, 
that's where a lot of the confusion came in. Because I feel like I remember reviewers and I spent like like early reviewers being like, "This plays really well. It feels really good." And let's then play, it came uh, out and just nothing happened. Let's play a quick game of um of higher lower. Uh, the top critic average on Open Critic Will. What do you think it was for Ooh, disintegration? Okay. Thirty five. What do you think it was, Jake? I mean, I'm just because I'm I'm remembering it being good. I'm gonna say like seventy five. It's a 63, folks. That's not um, good. Yeah. Not good. Cyberpunk anyways, 2077 got more than that. Yeah, but that's a worse yeah. game. Uh, anyways, the Halo co-creator joined <laughs> EA to start a new studio working on first-person games. The uh, bread and butter. Um, yeah, I'm glad uh, they could... I mean, he started up a studio to make disintegration, but I'm glad he's he's found new footing and can have some money behind them at EA and probably build I, um, something they actually want to build. Just to, look, I'm on I'm on a very pessimistic street tonight, uh, forever. Tonight. <laughs> um and I was just thinking to myself, I was like, what does an EA first person shooter look like? And then I was just like, oh, it's just a first person version of Anthem. Here's Edge. Titanfall. That's not Battlefield really title though. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Battlefield. So basically just mediocre. Call of Duty. That's Activision. I know. Dangus. They um, should make FIFA first person. <laughs> yes, Ooh, that would be cool. Physics based first person FIFA, baby. And with you got to pull your yeah, right stick is right leg, left stick is left leg, <laughs> baby. I'm in. You got to walk the sticks. To... Yes. Can we get Bill Lambert's yes! Bill Lambert's combat FIFA? I think they make FIFA at the Orlando branch. Aren't they so, getting? Ian, they're you're ditching closer. the FIFA I got name, it. aren't they? I got it. I'll, I'll go down there tomorrow, That's guys. That's a whole thing. <laughs> Um, next up, Stardew Valley creator uh, Concerned Ape announced his new game today, The Haunted Chocolatier. I watched this live stream. I think it looks adorable. It looks pretty much just like Stardew Valley, and I will play more Stardew Valley. Uh, I, I, every couple of weeks, and by weeks, I mean every couple hours, I think to myself, man, I should play more Stardew Valley. And then, like, the, the amount of whether or not I want to start over or take the time to relearn where I was like piles up and then I never play Stardew Valley again. But this sounds cool. You run a you run a chocolate shop inside of a haunted castle, I believe is the uh what are you laughing at? <laughs> it's you at every game. And then you end up just picking some real trash game to play for a while and you're like, I don't really like oh uh, I decided to pay seventy dollars for Far Cry six instead. And pay it's not seventy dollars. <laughs> not an a crazy person. Also, I've been playing Bloodstained, which is an excellent video. Symphony so. of the Night. Can we um I'm Ritual still, of the I'm night. still spicy Ritual hot. Ritual of can the we, night. Can we skip ahead to the spicy hot story here? Folks, oh yes. Enormous train simulator installed in the Tokyo Hotel. <laughs> Actually, we need to add this to the What's list your I don't want even want, what is spicy? Nothing else is spicy on. Monster Folks. Hunter World passed his twenty million copies, baby. Oh, out. Yeah, that's good. Turns out that the year Cyberpunk five Dungeons 2077 next two gen upgrade is not coming until Q1 2022. Are not even in Witch Queen. You have to pay for the deluxe edition just to get the dungeons. Yeah. This is some high tier BS, folks. This uh, Jake is this as stupid as it sounds. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Like I'm trying to remember. What is this? It seems like they 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 switch up their they're kind of the, the means by which they release their big expansions every time it happens. Cause like rise of iron wasn't the same as taken King and then destiny, like destiny Two vanilla wasn't the same as rise of iron. And so it's difficult for me in my head to kind of gauge where it's been based on where it's going. Um, because I certainly know that now with, with them breaking from Activision, like my my brain says, okay, they have to make that money up somewhere. It does feel weird that just the dungeons are separate and not like a yeah, like a like bundle them with something. It's um, just um, there were two really good Twitter takes that I liked. One of them was Destiny Two is a free to play game, and they make you grind like it's a free to play game. And yet they keep locking new content behind these big, expensive expansion purchases. Mm. And I was like, 
yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, that's stupid. And the other thing is, somebody said, and God, I love this. I just want to kiss. I just want to kiss this Twitter user so hard. They said, hey, remember when we all thought Activision were the ones ruining Destiny? Bungie doesn't think... know how to make a good game anymore. They just don't. And this is just another example of them just screwing up Destiny. Destiny is a fantastic feeling game, and yet they are just screwing up like the content rollout, the whole content locking in the crypt, which is just a BS reason. It's just like, it's just stupid. What are they doing? I... Yeah, I still don't fully understand the mechanical functions of the Destiny content vault. Um, and I do wish the year the big yearly expansions i do wish that were like 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 wow used to be where yeah. you'd buy you know uh uh cataclysm or or uh burning legion and that was then the whole it was like whatever it was 30 or 40 dollars for the whole expansion and you'd get the new raid and you'd get the new whatever um yeah it's weird um I'm certainly willing to give Bungie the benefit of the doubt, obviously. That, but it 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 does it is strange that every single time there's a new content release, they're mixing it up, and it's, they're they're switching things out. Yeah, just to continue my sass for just a little bit longer, it's just insane. Like you're saying, they keep changing the content delivery model and kind of the purchase model, just just in subtle variations, and somehow they have not it's not gotten better. Mm. Like it's just it, gotten, it's just gotten weirder and worse with every variation. And Cause I like, even had that doing? moment. I, I've been playing since rise of iron. So that would have been, what is it like 2015 or 2016? No, the game came out in 2014, 13. 14, yeah, 2013, yeah. 2014. So it must've been in 20... destiny one, destiny yeah. one. So I, I came in at the third big expansion, the beginning of year three, I believe. And I had a moment coming back to Beyond Light, the previous big expansion, uh, where I thought I had purchased everything to play everything. And then I got in and I was like, oh, wait, I, there's still some like $10 something I need to pay to get everything, um, which felt weird as someone who's been playing it for like the better part of five years. But Yeah, like you should have you should have. That's it's just. So I, I let look it's up mechanically. Obtuse. Yeah, mechanically that game looks great. It plays great. It feels so good. The story's great. And, and it feels like it is just so difficult to play because every time you try and play it, all the complicated systems and purchasing modules and like content flows just constantly push you away from the game. Because you're like, I don't know what I'm doing next. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to get to this content, that content. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Why did that disappear? And it's just like I know it's like they've Ugh. they've done a lot to revamp the new player experience, but I I can't I can't wrap my mind around being a new player and like jumping into Destiny now. Yeah, yeah. Um, even a returning player, I booted it up a couple months ago, and I like it, that's yeah because you were on the podcast and we talked about I did that one quest with Europa and the babies baby yeah. uh, things, and I had no idea what was going on. Like yeah. it, in no point directed me in a way like. Like, it was just a bunch of menus with text when I'm like, when someone, there should be a trigger that after three months, it puts you into a previously like, on. intro, previously on yeah. tutorial mission. Like, here's all the news things. Here's how you do them all. Like, but you're in a mission. It's not something I'm reading uh, yeah. and figuring it all out on my own. That's yeah, because you mean. are, at this point, you are, you're dropping into the middle of a television show that's been running for five years. And there's no way to watch previous episodes. Yeah. Like, I just have to jump in. Anyways. I love it so much. Um, we're good on the news, right? We can get uh, I mean, uh, we, you sort of mentioned no, Cyberpunk. I don't care about it. Ian was Cyberpunk, Witcher yeah. 3, updates not coming I, until next year. Look, I don't like blacklisting news things, but I am tempted to just not talk about Cyberpunk 2077 anymore. They have done absolutely nothing to earn our coverage, as small as it is, and it's just like... Ugh. You know, it's a good thing just, you don't decide what goes in the well, news. Then. I, honestly, I kind of forget. I forget. I forget about it until some news story pops up that's like, "Oh yeah, they're still trying to fix it." 
Yeah. They're still trying I, to fix it. It's not out on next gens. I think it was like six or seven months before it came back on the PlayStation store, even to yeah. be sold. I, yeah, I don't care. I don't care about the cyberpunk part of it. I do care about the Witcher 3 update because I, I think that'll be kind of cool to check out yeah, again. Because um, I every time I start that game, I make it a little bit further into it. Maybe they, maybe that time I'll get through one second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the music and we can get the heck out of here for the week. Folks, thank you so much for... Tuning in with us, Kyle saw you out in the chat, um, says, what will we laugh at if we can't talk about Cyberpunk 2077? We will laugh at Ian's bad opinions. Uh, folks, this Saturday, bad. this Saturday right. uh, morning to afternoon, I will be in the studio streaming some probably Ride to Hell with Chris from Save Data. And then at 9 p.m. Eastern, Kyle and I will be playing, uh, or I will be playing probably Visage, which is a terrifying looking horror game, and I'm not looking forward to it whatsoever. Uh, Tuesday, we played some Poppy Playhouse, uh, which was also equally terrifying. Um, yeah, there was a moment in that that I just wanted to leave the room. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was terrifying. Uh, next week, I don't know if we have anything planned on the docket. Uh, we are starting our plans. I, you know, I'm just gonna say something, but Tuesday, this sounds like a terrible idea. I don't even know if it's gonna work. But if I get my graphics card on Tuesday, maybe I install it on stream. Just super lo fi work on the computer stream. That's, That's not a bad idea. Awful, but maybe. Like a Henry Cavill. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because um, my stream PC would be down, so it would literally be super low tech <laughs> stream. That's not bad. Uh, folks, uh, we are also doing our plans for Extra Life, so definitely tune in for information on that on our Twitters uh, and all that sort of stuff at Subpixel Team. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at 170. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find Jake on Twitter at underscore Jake. Ario. That's Bye, it. everyone. See you next week. Bye.